and welcome to Scale Car Garage. Well, um, we're in the garage and I thought I would pull out something that, uh, I guess one other part of my collection. I have a lot of things as you can see in the garage here, but most of them are uh, pretty cool. And this one item is really cool. It, uh, I hope you find uh, this to be as cool as, as I find it. Um, I guess I'm kind of blubbering, but uh, it's one of the uh, one of the pieces of my collection that I was so excited when I found it, and I'm so happy to to own it. Uh, anyway, um, why don't I take you through a little bit of a background on this uh, particular piece? I don't want to give too much away right now, and then we can uh, we can actually go through uh, my uh, my little item here. <laughs> it's not little at all, actually. Um, anyway, enough of my uh, chattering on nonsensically here. Uh, let's, uh, let's get uh, right into this uh, here <sighs> on Scale Car Garage. Monogram Models, based in Morton Grove, Illinois, was an early adopter to the slot car boom of the 1960s. In 1964, the company entered this market by adapting seven 124th scale and two 132nd scale kits to accept slot car chassis made of brass housing their Tiger X100 motors. Positioned as being cars with more racing fun because of their speed and realism. No doubt, these cars are wonderful models. However, the choice of cars for this first foray into this new hobby were quite interesting. I don't know about you, but I've never seen photos of a Mercedes 540K racing against a Duesenberg dual cowl Phaeton. The two 132nd scale cars offered were neat. A modified Deuce Roadster and an MGA. By the end of 1964, Monogram increased their offerings in 132nd scale to include the Cooper Ford, Lola GT, Porsche 904, and Ferrari 275P and GTO LM. Monogram was so involved in the model car racing hobby that the company built a custom four-lane slot car track complete with scenery at its factory. I'm sure that this track was justified for testing new cars and for product photography, as well as just being a lot of fun. Monogram's track was used for photography as seen on the cover of its catalog and single-page ads of 1965 and looks to have been a work of art. Then, Monogram went all in, and in 1966, released six home racing sets. Each set was named after a famous racetrack. Watkins Glen, Le Mans, Road America, Indy Lotus, Riverside, and Sebring. Ask anyone who knows, and they will tell you that these sets were the best of the best in the 1960s. Even today, the design and construction rivals any track that is currently available. But this quality came at a cost. The least expensive set, Watkins Glen, was $35 with the most expensive top-of-the-line set, Sebring, costing a whopping $100. This would have the price of the Sebring set equating to a present-day price tag of $800. Needless to say, if you had any one of these monogram slot car sets, you were one very fortunate individual. I had never seen monogram track, never mind a monogram slot car set, in person before, for, for real. Uh, so I got really excited about it and just had to, had to buy it. So without further ado, here it is. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, so you can see that. It is the Le Mans set 
from Monogram. And um, I guess the, the track's uh, configuration is essentially a figure eight. But what's really neat is, first of all, I, you gotta love, 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 love the graphics. It's so 60s. Look at that. I mean, I was just gonna buy the box. But here's the surprise. Um, I'm gonna put my glasses on here for a sec. If then you open up the box, uh, take a look here. Let's be very careful with the top here. And there is what's inside. So you can see everything's there. Well, almost everything. Um, there, you used to get, uh, I guess, a lot of um, paper uh, instructions and information that wasn't in here, but check out what it is. So of course you, you have, um, right over here, you have the transformer, the two hand controllers, okay? Um, aprons, uh, curved sections, and straight sections. Really, really cool. Now, the, the thing that makes this track so wonderful is the, the, the surface. I don't, I don't know if you can see that, but it has this wonderful, wonderful, uh, beautiful kind of surface to it that isn't too abrasive, but isn't too smooth. It looks like it have a, a lot of, of, of grip. And you gotta love the, uh, the painted um, lines. And, and look at that. It, it's a, I don't know, let's see, it's a monogram. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Let's see if you can see that. It says monogram 1965. Wow. Interestingly enough, I, I think this is the same color plastic that monogram was using for their, their military models, their tank models at the same time. Um, but wonderful. And the other thing about this track was the way it went together. It was. It was fantastic. It snapped together like so, and you really had to, oh my gosh, it had such a tight fit. It was just wonderful. Uh, although I've never put this track together because I'm so afraid of it breaking because it's, it's perfect right now. But the real piece or piece de resistance here is, what, you see that green box right there? Just a green box, right? Until uh, you open it up and you realize that it also had the two cars here. Yes. Yes. Both cars. Ferrari 250 LM and the Ford GT. It's Ford versus Ferrari, folks. How about that, huh? So, yeah, I mean, they're not perfect. The tires are well, tires have seen better days. They're really quite crusty. But these are the home set cars. And you can see that the home set cars had, um, see that hopefully, they had pin guides, not guide blades, but pin guides. And two brushes, the size of the motors, huge. But oh my gosh, lovely, absolutely lovely cars. This version of the GT40, was the version that was raced at Le Mans in uh, 64, I believe. Uh, this particular car was one of the last to retire, I think. Um, what's really interesting about this particular model is that, and I've never seen another slot car that did this from Monogram, but you can feel here, see it has number 11, you can see that, but it's actually molded into the car, in, into the casting, both numbers, number 11. Nothing on the side, which is interesting, but it's actually molded into the plastic. And that, this was the version of the GT40 that uh, Carol Shelby's folks took and uh, turned into the Mark II. Um, this was still very much the Eric Broadley Lola GT version. Uh, that's another story, I won't, uh, I won't uh, bore you with that. It, it's missing a window post. I, I'm, Debating whether to actually restore that or not because it is the way it is. It's you know it's only original once, and here is the Ferrari 250 LM, which actually won Le Mans in 1965 with the North American Racing Team, uh, driven by uh, Jochen Rent and uh, Maston Gregory. Uh, but this car has a sticker, 
and these were the home set cars. You see the, uh, the wheels. This, for some reason, the Ferrari is uh, not chromed and the Ford GT is chromed. I have no idea why. Uh, but anyway, isn't that amazing? And look at the brass. The brass is still in great shape. Monogram made great product, um, and they still do. They still do. But the only piece of literature in this set was this card, which is uh, oh, the warranty card. I wonder if they still accept that. Um, but what's really neat here is they also have uh, a little survey. Um, and it basically says, uh, there's your registration card name, Iris. Where was the set purchased? Name of store location. Purchased as gift, hobby, other. Uh, what do you like best about your monogram racing set? That it's a monogram racing set. That's, that's what I like best. Uh, what, what do you think should be changed on your set? Nothing. And uh, what type of accessories would you like to see for your set? Well, what's interesting is that a lot of people must have put in some pretty detailed information here because Monogram then came out with a, a ton of accessories. Um, age of users. Okay, let's just get something absolutely crystal clear right now. We are all ageless. You agree? Good. Uh, do you enjoy your Monogram racing set? I enjoy it without even using it. So, Monogram, I hope you uh, will accept this as a verbal response to your survey card. Um, <laughs> just phenomenal, phenomenal set. Uh, no tabs are broken. I don't think this was ever really put together. I really don't. It's in that kind of, uh, of, of condition. The other thing that came along with this set, believe it or not, whoever had it also wanted extra track. Extra track. Six straight track pieces. And again, they are in magnificent condition. Like, magnificent. Brilliant. So there you go. Ah, as uh, time progresses, and of course we're gonna have more projects, we have lots of projects on the bench to do, but I just wanted to share this with you because um, it's just a, a wonderful piece of of engineering, even though back in the day, as you saw, these things were really expensive. So uh, I'm really pleased that I have this now. Thank you so much again for, uh, for joining me on this uh, little piece about monograms, slot car sets. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll get back to work on something here at, uh, at Scale Car Garage. Thank you again so much for joining me. See you soon. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe.